My name is Mary James, but you can call me Magical Mary. I have to say, this is my very first time ever doing stand-up comedy. Yeah. So I get to this part, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me tell you. Six months ago, the doctors told me that I had terminal pancreatic cancer and that I would be dead in not more than six months, or a little more than six months, and that I should go home and get my affairs in order. Tom, my loving husband, said, what, you have affairs? <laughs> no, really, initially, I worked so hard to get it ready, right? I mean, I was studying all my Buddhist literature, Taoism, meditation, connecting with the cosmos every day. I worked really hard at that. So I changed my mind. I decided to live. I almost had to grieve not dying because I had worked so hard at getting ready. But I took really good notes. So, I'm ready next time. <laughs> the outpouring of love, oh my god, it was beautiful, right? You know, the, the hugs and the cards and the prayers and the presents. And, and I don't have to give the presents back, right? <laughs> Just because I changed my mind. Except this friend of mine from Detroit, Janice, she sent me this pine tar so Oh my god. I'm sending that there. <laughs> um, you know, people respond so differently, right? I have one friend, oh, she knew exactly what I was going through. We commiserated and cried together because her cat had died two weeks ago. <laughs> and I had another friend call me. Switzerland, Switzerland, I'll help you get there. Okay, all right, I'll get the plane tickets. I go, Susan, slow down. What are you talking about? She says, you go to Switzerland, they'll euthanize you for everything, anything. And she says, I know how you hate to fly. So you can get a first class one-way ticket because you're coming back in an urn. <laughs> Euphemisms, right? We have so many euphemisms for, for death and dying because we just don't really know how to talk about it, right? Um, you know, uh, a lot of them you know, right? Like, you know, kick the can or uh, transitioning to the greener pastures. Uh, she's getting her wings, she's giving up the oxygen habit. She's, uh, she's uh, biting the big one. That one made Tom a little nervous. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll be real honest. Before I got this terminal diagnosis, uh, I you know I was really having a hard time dealing with this getting older, aging thing, right? Let me see a few elderlies out there. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But now I just feel like, yes, bring on aging. I'm right there. Woo! Woo! Aging, right? All right, so, so when I first got that diagnosis, you know, uh, I went through getting rid of all my worldly goods things. And my house was full of boxes, right? Didn't need to take anything with me. And my friend Bart came over, and he looked at all these boxes. He says, what, are you going somewhere? I said, yes, Bart. Haven't you heard? I'm going to bite the big one. <laughs> but Tom, well, I finally got rid of all the boxes, because Tom said, hey, 
I still got to, I still have to live here. <laughs> but I kept one six foot box out on the screen at courts, just in case I needed it. <laughs> so how did I get to this magical painting? Well, for me, it's a real mixture of Eastern medicine, Western medicine, Eastern medicine, I know, right? With all my teas, herbs, connected to the energy of the cosmos. But what did Western medicine have to give me? Well, surgery, man, that was too extreme. Chemo, there's too many side effects. Uh, so I decided on radiation. Well, one benefit from radiation was I got my very first tattoo. <laughs> I got three of them bum, 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 because they had to tattoo targets on me, right? So nowhere to shoot me. And you know, another thing, well, I feel like possibilities have opened to me now. Now I'm thinking about getting a full sleeve tattoo. Right? You know, and if you don't start getting your tattoos until you're in your 70s, you don't have to worry about what they're going to look like when you're old and wrinkled. Radiation. Well, so I said, right, can I have sex with radiation? Well, residual radiation. It makes it more fun to bind Tom's penis when it glows in the dark. <laughs> and I feel like I'm in a party with a glow stick. actually pretty excited about that. <laughs> so I think, okay, well, what would be your indulgences? Maybe a coffee drink every morning? Maybe a few lines of Coke? Yeah. Maybe some gummies? <laughs> I don't know. You know, my indulgence? Burning candles. Yes, girl. Now, hey, you might not think as much, but I only like 100% beeswax candles. And, you know, that's a five, six dollar a day hand candle habit. <laughs> but I'm indulgent. <laughs> right? Some people, I've heard, indulge by downloading, like, their daily porn update on their phones. <laughs> I really don't know very much about that. I've just heard say that that happens. Uh, I myself, I still get porn from a book. And this is the truth. I have the same book under my bed that has been there for almost 50 years. <laughs> now, it's getting kind of yellowed. A lot of dog-eared corners where the juicy hearts are. But indulge. That's my message to you. Indulge. You know, go for your indulgences. And live each day. Because I know I am.